Okay, let's talk about capacitors with dielectric material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, here's what here's where we're gonna go uh, with this. I want to review, you know, basic capacitance, and also we're, we'll use parallel plate capacitors um, to kind of explain this stuff. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna dielectrics. It's basically gunk, and you can use the phrase gunk. It's gunk that we're going to put between the plates. And, uh, and what, uh, what happens when you put gunk between the plates of a capacitor, two wonderful things happen. The plates don't come together and short out the capacitor, and it actually increases the capacitance of the capacitor. And we'll talk about why that is. And then we'll talk about dielectric strength. Now, what is dielectric strength? Uh, dielectric strength tells us what is the maximum voltage I can put across a capacitor before what we get, uh, what we call uh, magic smoke in, on the robotics team. Uh, in other words, the maximum voltage you get before you fry something. So if you exceed the voltage, you tear, uh, you ionize, uh, you tear atoms apart, and um, well, electrons anyway from them. And, bad things happen. So you don't. You want to make sure that you know when you have a capacitor, what is the maximum voltage we can put across that capacitor before the, the capacitor will fail. That's what dielectric strength is all about. So let's talk about uh, a capacitor. Here's a, a cross-section of a parallel plate capacitor. And if I put a certain voltage across it, hook it up to a battery or something, so I've got some delta V, that will force positive charge onto one plate and negative, uh, equal amount of negative charge on the other plate, and you'll get an electric field. Now I'm gonna zoom in on this. But um, this is not a very practical device like this. I mean, if I have this big plate of metal and another big plate of metal and they're, they're parallel like this. Well, what would happen if they were to accidentally, like someone were to bash into it and they would accidentally touch? Well, then it just becomes a very expensive wire, right? I mean, I mean the, 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 the charge, if the charge can touch, uh, I mean, if the plates can touch, it'll, the, the charge will just flow across. It'll uh, to equalize. And uh, so that's not gonna work. So uh, what they discovered when they, they started uh, putting uh, material between the plates. Now the material between the plates has to be a material that doesn't conduct electricity, right? Duh. If I put a big, oh, let's put a big hunk of, of uh, gold in between here, all right? Uh, yeah, all it's going to do is discharge the capacitor. So if, if, to keep those plates uh, apart, <clears throat> you have to put a material that does not conduct electricity between those plates. And that's called a dielectric material. Dielectric material is just stuff that doesn't Thank you. Yeah, let me know if I'm lost. It doesn't conduct electricity. Also known as an insulator. Uh, I, wait, uh, yeah. That's an insulator. An electric insulator. It doesn't conduct electricity. Well, you can make it conduct electricity. Uh, you just have to have a super high voltage on it and then it goes zap and smoke comes out and it's, it's quite fun. But here's what happens is really super interesting. Let's put a voltmeter on here. A voltmeter is something that measures voltage. And we'll actually use a voltmeter a little later on. Um, and so I have this uh, capacitor, and let's say there's nothing between the plates. 
I mean, there is air, right? But uh, air turns out to have, uh, uh, air acts very, very similarly to just a pure vacuum. You're not gonna notice a big difference between air between the plates and a vacuum. So let's just pretend like somehow, or maybe we put this in a vacuum chamber and we measure the, the voltage across it. And, and so we have a certain capacitance. And we're gonna call this capacitance C naught. And that is the capacitance when nothing is between the plates. of your capacitor, C0. But then we put uh, some gunk in there, and, and there's different kinds of gunk. I like to call it gunk. Here's all the different kinds of gunk. And this is in your book. And these are the kinds of things that we put between the plates of capacitors, things like Bakelite. Bakelite was one of the first plastics and nylon, paper. Sometimes we just use plain old paper. Uh, polystyrene, different plastics, Pyrex, glass. Sometimes we put oil. I mean, that's for a very specialized kind of uh, Teflon. Uh, uh, water, as long as it's, um, you know, uh, deionized water or, uh, you know, uh, distilled water, there's no ions in it. Pure, pure water. Pure water is actually a pretty decent dielectric. All right, so, so anyway, um, there's different materials you can put between the plate. And these are materials that don't conduct electricity. So here's what happens. If I, um, let's say that the voltage that I get for a certain, um, the delta V across that plate, I'm going to call it delta V naught. And let's see, well, uh, C equals Q over delta V. So delta V equals Q over C naught. But here's what happens when I put a dielectric material into between the plates. So it's kind of hard to draw this. Maybe I'll, I'll, maybe I'll just redraw it, the capacitor. <coughs> So here's the same capacitor that I had up here, but now I'm going to put some gunk in between. I'm just going to place it in there. I'm just going to take this, like this uh, silly putty or something, and I'm just going to go, and I'm going to put it in there, and I'm going to measure the voltage. And here's what I notice. I notice a drop in voltage. The voltage goes down. The field becomes weaker. The distance between the plates doesn't change, but the field between the plates gets weaker. Whoa. Now, look at this equation right here. If you have, you have an isolated capacitor that's been charged, you hook it up to a battery, you charge it up, you disconnect it, the charge is still there, then you put gunk between the plates. Now, it's got the same charge it had before. The charge on the capacitor hasn't changed. But now, all of a sudden, you measure a drop in voltage. Now, if the voltage goes down, but the charge on, on the plates is the same, what has to be true about this capacitance, the capacitance? If this went down, the capacitance went up. Does that make sense? Whoa, the capacitance went up. Yeah. So, and, it, and how much it goes up depends on the dielectric material. Now, I showed you that long list of materials here. 
and you have what's called the dielectric constant and I know you can't read it from where you're sitting but it's in your book on page 812 and there's all these uh, these constants here um, like 3.5 3.7 3.78 for fused quartz whoa strontium titanate 233 it tells you by what factor it changes the capacitance so let's go ahead and solve for uh, the capacitance uh, the capacitance well if if <clears throat> uh, well C not uh, explain this very well let's say the capacitance of the capacitor is going to be equal to the um, uh, the capacitance when there's nothing between the plate times the dielect uh, the uh, dielectric constant and we call this uh, kappa and it's the dielectric constant and it tells you how much it multiplies the uh, capacitor it makes the capacitor stronger or I mean I, I mean uh, greater but for the same voltage you can store more charge on the capacitor because of this material okay so that's really helpful I mean this this gunk that we put between the plates really does serves two functions it keeps the plates separated right it keeps them separated so they won't short out so it's a physical barrier so that they won't touch and zap but it also increases the capacitance and by how much depends on the material you use and I, I want to show you why and this is kind of a little bit beyond where we need to go but it's kind of interesting. So if I uh, let's let's take this big fat parallel plate capacitor. I'm gonna hook it up to a battery. Let's say a 12 volt battery. So here's our battery. I'm just gonna draw it as a. Here's the terminals of the battery. We're going to put 12 volts across there. Well, that's going to force a certain amount of charge. And I'll create an electric field between there. Let me zoom in. Now I'm going to put a dielectric material. I'm going to leave a little bit of room for drawing. I mean, you would actually have it all the way up against the plates, but... I'm going to leave a little space there just to make it easier to see. Now, here's what happens. The dielectric material is made out of protons and electrons, right? Molecules, atoms, and so on. I'm just going to draw a couple of atoms here. These, these little dots here are the nuclei of the atoms. But in a dielectric material, the valence electrons, those electrons that are on the outside of the atoms, are held tightly by the atom. They're not free to move like in a metal. The valence electrons in a metal just buzz around. Very promiscuous. But these, uh, the, these are very, you know, they, they hold on, they stick, they're very loyal to their nuclei. But let's take a look at this. Um, I'm going to blow this, uh, this atom up. Let's take a look at an atom. And I'm just going to draw the nucleus. And here's the electron cloud, right? Oh, yeah. So here's the electron cloud, right? Now, <clears throat> what if I put an electric field across there? I've got charge over here, and I put, and it creates an electric field. Here's my electric field. What's that going to do to this atom? It's going to warp the electron cloud. The electron is going to be attracted. Uh, to the proton over here like let's say here's the edge of the um, of the capacitor so this is going to put up a, a positive charge well what it, that does 
is that it warps the electron, uh, the electron cloud. It warps it so that the negative part becomes very close to this. Well, what does that do? It, it tends to cancel out this, um, not really canceling out, but it neutralizes this positive charge and it leaves room for the battery to shove more positive charge in there. So, and this is called a bound charge here on, on this dielectric material. The charge, it, it, it polarizes the atom. You, this has got a net positive side. There's the negative side. And, the, and this negative positive propagates through the whole material all the way to the other side of the capacitor. So it's this warping of the electron uh, clouds around this that allow this to happen. And, and so uh, really you can say the capacitance is equal to the dielectric constant times the original capacitor with nothing between the plates. But this is why it works. It leaves room for more charge. Now real quick, I'm going to take two minutes to talk about dielectric strength. It gives uh, the dielectric strength in your book <clears throat> here. It says, like, like, let's do it for Bakelite. Bakelite, 24 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter. So 24 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter. Now what, that, what this means is that if I have a meter thick um, a meter of Bakelite so here's a capacitor and let's say this capacitor there's one meter of distance uh, one I, I, need, I just need to sit out and quit fooling around um, let's say I have one meter between the plates I could put 24 million volts on that capacitor but if I exceeded 24 million volts, it will tunnel an ion path through the material like a little lightning bolt, burning, causing, ugh, melting, and zap, and then smoke comes out. Well, but chances are your capacitor is not uh, that. So what you can do and I, there's no variable name for dielectric strength that I've been able to find. But if you want to know the maximum voltage you can get, take the distance between your plates and multiply it by the dielectric strength. Which you look up in a table and that will um, tell you what the maximum voltage is. You know, like this is one centimeter, it would be 24 times 10 to the 4 volts. So th this just gives you a ratio of how many volts per meter you can put across that thing before that material will go poof. It will, the, 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 the voltage will be so strong that these bound uh, charges won't be bound anymore. They'll actually strip them away and create and ionize the material and, and that gets super hot, it requires a lot of heat, and, and it'll drill a tunnel through the material. And that's, that's what a lightning bolt is in air, but you can do the same thing through, through other materials as well. Anyway, so that gives you a real quick thing on dielectric strength. Well, that was a little bit rushed, but uh, read the book, and that is all. Yeah.